Hello and welcome to Winchester on a very bright and sunny day. And we just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for joining in on Wine Festival Online 2020. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you who don't know us, she's Susie, I'm Peter. I think I've got that the right way around. Yep. Um, we are masters of wine who happen to be married to each other. We're not quite sure how that happened, but it kind of works. And we've worked out the secret is to make sure we drink and enjoy enough delicious wine of an evening so that come the next morning we can't really remember exactly what we were arguing about the night before it seems to <laughs> seems to work seems to be okay anyway we, we launched wine festival winchester seven years ago and it's been amazing now obviously this year is a little bit different we've gone online and peter and i just could not resist the temptation to join in on a couple of these master classes and who better to do that with than a revamped rebooted majestic wine and clearly very busy as you can see um, now the idea with this tasting initially was to look for alternatives to the festive classics um, things that are good value or a little bit different but as we were choosing the countries as we were looking at the countries we thought actually a lot of these are countries that have been really hard hit this last year so australia the bushfires in january horrific um, Italy, coronavirus, hard hit. South Africa, um, sales and export bans and restrictions. They've been really, really hard hit this year. And then finally, California with its wildfires more recently. Anyway, we thought let's make a positive out of all of this. Let's champion these wines and let's bid a not so fond farewell to 2020 on our own terms by enjoying the wines and really supporting those countries and those producers that have been most hard hit. So let's do that. Let's go and taste. Come on. So we are going to start, aren't we? The way every celebration should start? Let's just start. Let's just start with how some every, fizz. How every fizz. day should start. So you've got, you've got one of these. If you've got your case of wine, you've got a bottle of this, which is Quartet. Yeah. Um, now we, this is obviously an alternative to champagne. Let's thinking alternative to champagne. Um, we could have gone English, of course. That would be our natural inclination. But we've got loads of lovely English sparkling at the festival already. So this have. is something a bit different. It is. It's from California. And you I'm are just going to show, show us how you, to show open. You how, so, so first of all, we're going to take the foil off. This is just a quick how to open, if I can do it in a... So beautifully how, how sommelier-like way. By a masterclass by Susie Bell with no pressure whatsoever <laughs> at this point. I'm this sure is the I'm point everyone feels nervous so about. Make sure, make sure whatever you do at this point that you keep your hand on the on the cork as much as you can because you just never know. Cool. It's really important that this bottle is cool. Hold your hand on the cork and twist the, the bottle. So twist the bottle, keep that pressure on the cork to make sure you're looking for your gentle foot, aren't we? Not a, not a big pop. A slightly disappointing not sound. A, not, a, not a Formula yeah, One pop. Are we no. ready? How here we go. How are you going? I'm quite thirsty. Are you? No pressure, but you know, I'm dying over here. Oh, that's nice. Is that nice? Okay, perfect. She's, she's annoying. Perfect. Good, so that's, that's, uh, that's, Come that's on, opening your fizz. Glass, I'm going to pour it in the glass. So let's, let's just say a little bit about it. This is a bit of a cheat, isn't it, as well? Because we said alternatives to champagne, but this is made by a champagne house, isn't it? It is made by a champagne house. Thank so you. made by Louis Rodera. So they went into California in 1982. Yeah, a a guy ago, called yeah. Jean-Claude Rousseau, who's the president at the time of Champagne Louis Rodera, went into California and planted vines and, uh, and made... Rodera Estate wine, and this is one of them. So this is Quartet. It's a blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. So 60% Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir. There's a bit of time on lees, which is a, a, the aging process on the yeast lees mm. that gives it that lovely toasty, buttery, biscuity taste. And really, truly, Quartet has been consistently, I would say, one of our favourite new world yeah, sparkling wines. Yeah, for many wines. years. It's just for many gorgeous. Because I think a lot of making wines in this style, sort of champagne style, what you need is expertise. You need experience. And the Champenois have that, you know, hundreds of years. Mm. And I think mm. you get a taste of that lovely, it's, it's really lovely. savoury, you know, biscuity, um, that is champagne. The, the president of, of Champagne, Louis Rodera, I, I interviewed him um, in 2004. And I remember saying to him, you know, have you ever, do you think you'd ever be fooled thinking that uh, a new world fizz was actually champagne? And he said, and I can't do his beautiful French accent, on, but he said, um, I, have been, I have been taken only once. <laughs> so it's so French, isn't it? And he said it was with Quartet, so he thought it was well, he Louis Rodeau Brut Premier. That. He would, he say. would, he but would of course. The blend apparently is the opposite of what Louis Rodeau Brut Premier, their yeah. sort of classic non-vintage champagne is. Yeah. Which mainly, uh, this is mainly Chardonnay, 60% 60, 60 Chardonnay, 60% yeah. Chardonnay, 40% Pinot. But it's just got that lovely biscuity. It's absolutely gorgeous. You sink into this wine. It's what, yeah. 22 99 on the mixed six which offer. I think is, in terms of, it's not cheap, but value wise, fantastic. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. And just delicious drinking. Yeah. Um, what would you put that with? Well, I mean, this is breakfast, <laughs> Christmas Day breakfast. 
Who wouldn't? You, you know, brunch, can you? M maybe. Uh, so how about smoked salmon, a fair teeth salmon. before you yeah. or whatever? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, cut to finish with, a couple of fizz tips we throw you away. Susie's mentioned about chilling. So the pressure in a bottle like this is about five or six atm atmospheres, which, is about, which means five kilograms of weight per every square centimetre of bottle. So or like a double-decker bus tyre. Massive pressure. Chill it right down. The key, what you didn't see before Susie opened it, was chilling it right down. But, and this is really, really important, we tend to serve our sparkling wine a bit too cold, like our white wine. If you take it straight out of the fridge, it's ideal for opening it, open it then, but then leave it for 20 minutes. This is our 2020 rule. Take your whites and your fizz out of the fridge for 20 minutes before you serve them. Put your reds into the fridge for 20 minutes before you serve them, because equally, we serve our red wines too warm. So, with your champagne or sparkling wine, at this festive time, don't be afraid. Chill it, open it, leave it out for a little bit before you serve it. And that way you can really appreciate the aromas and textures that much better. So we've had our fizz, it's time to move on to some white wine. And uh, if, you've oh. actually, if you've actually bought the case of wine, you're gonna have two white wines in it. You've got the Creation Chardonnay, which is this one. From and you've also got the, from South Africa, and the Phileas uh, Chardonnay from Western Australia. Um, they are both amazing wines. They uh, are amazing, but the way the case works, yeah. the is way the we're case just going to taste the creation, aren't we? So we've, you've got six wines in your case. We're going to taste in this masterclass four of them. So we've done the fizz, we're going to do the creation Chardonnay, we'll do a red and then the sweet wine. Uh, but we'll talk about both of them. We'll talk about both because they're both delicious. Um, so what we're going to do first is how to taste like a master. Now, I don't want to teach my grandmother to suck eggs. I know you guys you're all are masters. You're all pro tasters, but sometimes it's good just to have a recap on how to taste like a master. So uh, Susie and I have our five point tasting protocol. Stop, look, sniff, taste, enjoy. And the way to remember that is you take the first letter of all those things, and say them quite quickly after a couple of glasses of wine and it sounds like sloshed. So there you go. So stop, why do we stop? Well, life is busy. This is me time in a glass. You know, this is mindfulness for free. So buy into it. But also wine tasting, you need a bit of concentration. Look, why do we look? Well, 10 second tip on how to become a wine expert, look like a wine expert. Take your glass, just lift it up slightly above eye level, tip it 45 degrees and then just, just gaze into it with a mixture of kind of intensity and slight sort of anger. If you can squint, it makes it even better. And if you see someone doing that, you think, ooh, they know what they're doing. Tip, next dinner party, try that. Your host will panic and get their very best wine out. So do that. Why do we look less flippantly though? Check everything's all right to drink. Is it, is it good? A little tip here with whites and reds. It can, you can have clues from how it looks. White wines get deeper colored with age. Red wines get lighter colored with age. This wine's a little bit deep. Um, it's a little bit old, but also because it's been grown in a warm climate and also because it's had a little bit of oak aging on it. Sniff. This is an important thing, right? A little experiment here. Give the wine a sniff without doing anything to it. Okay. Then swirl it. Now, this is where you can get stains. Don't worry about stains. It's, it's good. You, you swirl it and those aromas just come out of the wine and you can appreciate it so much more, can't you? Yeah. It's just glorious. Your nose is your power tool of wine appreciation, so use it. It doesn't mean you have to identify every single last aroma in here. It's more about, do I like these things? If so, what other wines can I find like this? And then we move on to tastings. Again, a quick experiment. Sometimes we taste just by knocking things back. So you just, it's just a quick, gone. Didn't really taste much. That didn't really touch the sides. What we really do with tasting is treat this like mouthwash. I want you to take it into your mouth, Swirl it round for at least five or ten seconds. Warm the wine up a little bit. That way you really get to appreciate the texture and the aromas. And finally, that last bit, enjoy. When you've swallowed the wine, just breathe in and out three times and pay attention to what you're tasting. How do the flavours linger? That's the secret to a good wine. And hopefully, when I do that with this, it will be a good wine. But while I'm doing it, you talk us through it. Okay, so this is Creation Chardonnay. It's from South Africa. It's from a cooler part of South Africa, so Walker Bay. It is an oaked Chardonnay. In fact, both of these wines are oaked wines, and it's got a lovely richness to it. But the, one of the things about the wine is, it's grown in the cooler part of South Africa, the Walker Bay, and it's grown at high altitude, ancient, ancient soils. And so you've got something here that's a fr fresh, 
but also minerally. It's got this beautiful, mm. beautiful character to it. And then, as we say, the oakiness gives it that richness as well. So it's a really well-made wine. And the owner, I think, is Swiss. Is owner and winemaker is originally Swiss. Swiss. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When we yeah. were trying these wines, we both talked about Chablis when we were trying them, didn't yeah. we? So if you're a big yeah, fan yeah. of Chablis, this is almost like a Grand Cru Chablis, richer style, but still really, really fresh. And then the Phileas, the Phileas from Margaret River yeah, yeah. So this is, is from Margaret gorgeous. River. This is made by a, a lovely lady called Virginia Wilcock. I visited a couple of years ago. She's very funny. Um, but she is a great winemaker. And so this is Margaret River. So again, in somewhere like the Margaret River, in fact, with both of these wines, you've got an ocean influence. So you've got that cooling influence. Often with new world countries, it's quite warm. The grapes get very ripe. If you can find a little tiny bit of that new world country that is cooler and perhaps close to the ocean to get that ocean influence. In fact, the same with the quartet that we tasted. The ocean influence cools the region down and gives you that lovely freshness in the grapes. So they're both beautifully fresh. If you want the difference between the two, the Phileas is slightly less oaked and it's a slightly lighter style. Not, it's not got less flavour, it's just a kind of a little bit fresher, lighter, crisper. It's more your kind of smoked salmon wine. This one, if you want a white wine with your turkey, I would say the creation. Yeah, or your fish pie. Either way, two delicious whites. So we are privileged now to be joined by Chloe and Jack. Now, Chloe, uh, you will recognise, many of you will recognise these guys from the festival. Uh, Chloe is store manager at Majestic Winchester, uh, and Jack is head of comms uh, at Majestic. So welcome, guys. It's lovely to have you. Thank uh, you. We want to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. We do, we yeah. do indeed. So um, my, this, this masterclass is all about beating the 2020 blues. Um, I know everybody would love to know, really love to know, how things have been this year for Majestic. So in Winchester, it's been, it's been a strange year, um, obviously, for everybody. Um, we've been here throughout. We have obviously haven't had our customers in store, which has been a real shame. But over the last six, seven months, we've had over 300 new wines join the range, um, which we're really, really excited about. We're getting customers excited about them as well. Um, and as we've kind of reopened, customers have been able to come in and buy them. And they seem to have gone down really, really well. Uh, particularly, we've had a kind of overhaul of several of our, you know, our sort of biggest ranges so australia um south africa um have been just completely overhauled so it's really really fun and really exciting to see mm. all these new wines mm. coming in yeah we've noticed excited. that so you've kind of taken advantage of the time to to get these new wines coming through because there's been a change of direction hasn't it uh, majestic and we're seeing some of these yeah. amazing wines coming back into store and it's been quite exciting to see and, yeah and jack in terms of you know we, we all we've all heard this these stories about everybody drinking more and more and more in lockdown particularly buying more from retailers because we haven't necessarily been able to go to restaurants what, what what's that effect what does it had an effect on majestic in that sense yeah so uh, i think kind of to what chloe said we've seen a lot of people coming back to majestic who had maybe lost touch with us over recent years or are discovering us for the first time we've had a lot of new customers to the business and it's been quite sad in a way that we've we've had this transformation whilst nobody's really been able to come in and see it for mm. themselves mm. so it's been one of the defining features I would say of lockdown is that people have been willing to experiment a bit more so you know as Chloe says we've got 300 new wines into the range normally with Majestic the way you would discover that is you would come in you'd speak to someone like Chloe and you would taste the wines together and you'd be confident that yes this is the right one for me now when you're ringing up over the phone or you're ordering online you, you can't really do that but what we have seen is still these new wines have have gone off like a rocket that's so a, that's amazing though in yeah. itself really isn't yeah. it that people are just maybe i mean maybe as well people have more time to kind of look online at the information that that's there they've got a little bit more time to sort of chill about their wine choices and just therefore go for something that's a bit different so so i mean anyway let's let's move on to to christmas what 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 do you think are your sort of favorite wines for christmas um for me I don't think you can beat the traditional big buttery um, Chardonnay, old world or new world, not too fussy really. Um, white Burgundy, always going to be a favourite in my house, um, but actually discovering more and more from the new world that I'm enjoying. So a lot of the Californian range mm. and the, the sort of US range we're getting in um, aren't so intensely oaky and they're a sort of more delicately refined style and therefore actually a little bit more akin to a Burgundy um, and not necessarily as expensive as some of the more premium Burgundies. Um, on the reds, I mean, the traditional Pinot Noir, but I do like something a little bit fuller as well. So I'll always kind of enjoy a big Rioja, um, something with a bit of spice to it. Um, I just think this time of year, 
it's that's the kind of style that I go for. Really go for enjoy heart drinking. warming, yeah, big absolutely. flavors, bold yeah. flavors. I'm yeah. so with you too. Jack, are you in the same sort of vein, or are you more of a delicate, nuanced man at Christmas? Do you like your detail? I mean, You're describing I Jack as a delicate, <laughs> nuanced, <laughs> delicate, nuanced man. Just a delicate, nuanced man. I am Take it as you want. Don't you? Yes, man. Um, I, I know, I, I, I do like my classics at Christmas. I always kick off with a bottle of English fizz. Um, mm. Usually mm. something with a bit of sugar as well in the morning seems to, uh, you know, if you maybe... How early are we talking? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> 11 o'clock. Once, once you've kind of, yeah. well, normally we come the, the Christmas Eve pub <laughs> trip. Um, but then I, as well, I, I do like throwing a, a couple of curveballs in mm. as well. So, um, you know, one of the ones we'd be looking at this year to really recommend, Pinot Noir is obviously a great match for, for Turkey. And um, we've got a new G German Pinot Noir entering the range, mm. which I think is fantastic kind mm. of value and, and something a little bit different. And obviously Germany and Christmas, there's some quite nice kind of resonance there as well. Mm. Um, things like Assertico as well, just something a little bit fresher, maybe to go with a starter. So that would be um, a Greek, just to explain, that's a Greek white. Greek um, white, yeah. Santa from Santorini. Yeah, um, and it's a great one if you're, if you're a fan of kind of Sauvignon or those kind of fresher, zingier styles just mm. to, to kind of get your taste buds going before the before the main event as well. Yeah, because so. yeah. yeah, Christmas can be, there can be a lot of heavy flavours actually and to what you say Chloe, you know, oh, you want some heartwarming flavours but at the same time it can yeah. be a bit much, can't it? Mm. And not just on Christmas Day we're talking, you know, all over the festivities you can end up kind of being maxed out so having things that are a bit more refreshing and moorish and appetising and stimulating the appetite to have more food yeah. can be quite a good thing. And, and I mean, what, what do, you, do you think these are the kind of wines that that you're, what do you anticipate at Majestic in terms of people coming and really going for for their for their Christmas Day table? Traditionally, we're very traditional customer base in terms of Majestic in this store. So Old World French is very much the kind of kind of bread and butter of what we sell. Bordeaux, um, lots of Bordeaux drinkers. Um, Rhone more and more as well, particularly with the new range of Rhone wines that we've had in some more interesting regions, things like uh, Lyrac, Resto, kind of more premium Rhone stuff coming in, which is really really nice to see. Um, but always going to be an appetite for things like New Zealand Sauvignon and the kind of new world, particularly um, where people are sort of entertaining, perhaps not in the same way that they would have done previously, but the kind of more eight to 10 pounds, there's a lot more kind of choice and a lot of people do go for that kind of range as well, just for kind of coughing, drinking, I suppose, like you say, there's that special bottle for Christmas day. And then there's the other bottles that kind of fit in around that. Um, and yeah, I think probably more traditional, I expect, but, but who knows? But. So, so we're going to try and move some of yeah. these traditionalists away today. Absolutely. We've got alternatives and uh, mm. I think it's probably time that we moved on to the reds. It is. So we're moving now onto our red wine and mm. we're moving from the new world. We've had California, we've had Australia, we've had South Africa. We're moving to the old world and this is an Italian red. It's the Valpolicella Repasso. Yeah, it's Villa Borghetti. Okay. I love that label. How cool is that? Isn't that gorgeous? It's, it's just, yeah. oh. not, that, not that I'm a, you know, interested in, in how a wine <coughs> label You're all looks. about the labels, aren't you? <laughs> so, so the mission here, I love the labels. Susie Barry, Master of Wine. <laughs> Very it's all about the labels. By the labels. It's all about Often. the labels. There you go. Um, um, this yeah. wine. So Valpolicella Ripasso. Oh, um, so man. from the Veneto in northern Italy. Yeah. Um, and you talk about the good stuff. I'm just going to enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> so Ripasso. What does it mean? Mm. Well, you can get straight Valpolicella. If it's made as a Ripasso, it's going to be richer because essentially the wine is refermented on the skins of the Amarone, which is made from dried grapes. Exactly. So, so Amarone, that, that real, really rich, powerful wine, which is made by drying the grapes, so evaporate uh, the water and you get really intense flavours. So those mm. skins are added back into Valpolicella normal, which can be quite light, really, just to give it a bit of extra oomph. And that's exactly what you get here. This that is, is gorgeous. gorgeous. Absolutely. Delicious. Was it 12 99 again? 12 99 on a mix six. It is oh, so refreshing, Beautiful. so moorish. You've got, you always get good acidity, good Valpolicella to have good acidity, crunchy. You know, it makes you salivate, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes, makes you think of food. Water. But I mean, also, and, and we're, we're talking Christmas, our alternative Christmas. This is perfect. Whether you are having turkey, whether you're having goose, whether you're having, what else do people have on Christmas Day? What duck, duck, um, game, venison. Even if you want some beef. Beef, I mean, whatever, um, lamb. It's a great oh. wine. It's just, it covers all those bases. But it's I would say even if you're having fish, actually. Yeah, you can have it with something lighter fish, as well. Vegetarian. Or, or chicken, vegetarian stuff, mushroom stuff. But it's, it's um, you know, it, it's got that lovely crunchy tangy acidity. And cherry. But it kind of needs Sour food. Cherry. So you can taste this. If you're tasting this now, you can taste it and think, oh, it's a bit kind of acidic and it's a bit kind of tannic, it's quite harsh. 
Put it with food. This is a food wine. It is glorious. Try it. Give it. Give I'm it a second sure chance. It's that acidic and harsh, though. It's just. No, it, it's, 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 so it's gorgeous. Lovely. But the other red on. in the case. The other red in the case. The option. The Muga Rioja. We had to feature Rioja. Maybe this goes into classics a bit more. But you well, know, as, as you know, as Chloe said, um, she loves a Rioja. I know, and it's gorgeous. This is a wine to sink into. Um, Muga, absolutely delicious. A bit more expensive, seventeen ninety nine. But you know, you can taste that. It's like sinking into your favourite leather armchair of an evening. It's just, this is creamy, it's it's dense, it's flavoursome, it's absolutely so they're, gorgeous. So they're very different styles of wine and I think this one, more than uh, your Christmas turkey wine, this one is for more goose or um, even if, you know, if you're going to have beef or lamb on Christmas day, it's a really satisfying, smooth, sumptuous wine. Well, there you go. Lovely. Reds, sorted. So what better way to finish off proceedings, you know, celebrations with a lovely, gorgeous sweet wine. We've got one here. This is the De Bortoli uh, Botrytis Semillon from Riverina. Look at the colour. It's just golden and it's the most magical wine. So oh. Riverina, New South Wales, De Bortoli, historic. Uh, so Australia. In Australia, talking Australia. sorry, we're talking Australia. Uh, historic, oh, originally Italian. So I know, I'm, it's hard to speak when I've just smelt that because it's just... Oh my goodness, that's good. That's a it's like a sort of a combination of, mm. of barley sugars and, and orange marmalade and, ah. and, and honey. But it's not too sweet. It's sweet, but as mm. with all really good sweet wines, it's not cloying. It's got lovely acidity to refresh the palate as well as that mm. richness. Now, so oh, third generation good. now, De Bortoli. They make Noble One, which is the most amazing, intense, like this, but even more intense, sweet wine, really famous. Mm. This is like a good value alternative to that. So this is 9 99 I think, it's for, the, for, for the half, half bottle. bottle. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. And, and food, we're going to talk about food with this, won't yeah, we? So yeah. you could do the mince pies. Yes. You could do your Christmas pudding. Or, yeah. I have another suggestion. Um, do you know what always reminds me of Christmas? Um, as a child, I always got a chocolate orange in my stocking. And, uh, and, and last that, year I, I noticed... you got other stuff as well. I mean, you know, not much, no, no, very poor, very, like no, 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 very little. <laughs> a tangerine and a chocolate orange. Chocolate orange. Uh, no. <laughs> but last year I noticed they'd brought out white yeah. chocolate oranges and I tried to get one and they'd sold out. So this year, I got in early. It's all about the chocolate oranges, right? Here we go. Come Sorry. on, come on. Then. Sorry to anybody who's a chocolate aficionado. Yeah, so I'm going to tap it. What's the what's the saying? Oh, tap just it. get on with it. Open tap it, it unwrap it, and share a little luxury. Oh. So here we go. If anyone wants to hire her for a ter for a chocolate orange advertising white, campaign, you know, she's free and available. Orange. I know, never, I know, I know, I know. Anybody who loves chocolate and is, is a proper chocolate person will be turning, turning in the world. Well, I'm not sure what the guys at the board mm. are going to think of this. So, but oh, God, that's good. That mm. is good, actually. Um, oh. That's very festive, very Christmas. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry, that is delicious. Okay, so mm. while we're going on with this, does it work? We're, does, we're it, gonna, does it taste nice? It does. It absolutely does. <laughs> I know what I'm we're doing. We're going to wrap things up and start by saying thank you very much for watching and being part of Wine Festival Online. This is all about you guys. Thank you so much. Also, thank you very much to Majestic for having us here, letting us run a mock in their store. Yeah, thank to you Chloe, to, Jack. Thank you to Jack and Chloe for being absolutely fantastic. And of course, you can buy all these wines on a slight discount. They are fantastic. They're available in stores. Now, we also have to say thanks to Chris and Paddy for producing mm. this for us. This uh, working with us and making us look kind of OK, I think. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, obviously, to all our sponsors, in particularly our headline sponsor, Rathbones. Remember, there are other masterclasses coming up now. Um, you can watch this afterwards. You can watch this afterwards and you catch up. You can watch this again. If you really want, you can watch I'm this sure again. sure you want to. Or not, just press pause. Either way, here's to beating the 2020 Blues with delicious wines. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Chocolate orange. Mm.